Hi, I'm Nicolleen Peck and I teach self-government, which is actually a type of parenting and good communication that strengthens families. People always ask me, Nicolleen, can toddlers learn self-government? Well, the answer is yes. But don't stop watching now because I'm going to tell you how to teach your toddlers to learn self-government in this video. talk about how toddlers learn and how you can teach your toddlers self-government. It is possible. In fact, I'm living proof of it. My children were learning self-government skills and principles by the time they were two years old, and I have now seen thousands of families teach their toddlers self-government too, all over the world. So let's get started. The one thing about toddlers that we must remember is that their brains are so very, very small. The part of the toddler brain that they revert to using all the time is the emotional part of the brain. So this mid part of the brain where they immediately immediately go to emotional responses. This is something that they use when they're babies in order to get their message across to the parents, but then over time as they're learning words, they still revert back to that old central part of the brain, that amygdala, that mighty amygdala that helps us with our emotions. Now emotions are important and a toddler's emotions do teach us still a lot about that toddler, but we can teach them to go to prefrontal cortex in the, in the front brain so that they can actually have more of a chance of developing their cognitive abilities. Children can learn to do even complicated skills like disagreeing appropriately when they are as young as two years old if they they are verbal and I'm going to say fairly verbal. They don't have to be able to speak perfectly, but if they can speak in small sentences, then they can learn to disagree appropriately. If they can even just say the word, okay, they can learn to follow instructions and accept no answers from their parents and accept consequences. So they really don't have to have tons of verbal competency to use the skills that I'm known for teaching in the teaching self-government parenting system. So let's talk really quickly about what other developmental things that we need to recognize since their brains are so tiny. Toddlers are only able to focus for short periods of time. So what that means is we need to keep our interactions short. We need to make sure that we're not getting emotional and that we're not lecturing. Lecturing does not work for our children. And when we lecture to them, they shut off after about like 30 seconds if they're a teen. So if they're a toddler, they might shut off after 10. If you say the wrong word in your lecture, that's gonna throw them off track. Toddlers are emotionally attached to almost every word that they hear. So if we get emotional, our toddler will hyper-focus on one word and get emotional based on that word. And they won't even listen to the rest of what we're saying. So our correction skills are vital to helping our toddler learn to self-assess. So let's remember that when a person learns self-government, that the definition of self-government is being able to determine the cause and effect of any given situation and possessing a knowledge of your own behaviors so that you can control them. This means that a person has to be in a constant state of self-assessment. Now, toddlers are not going to be constantly self-assessing, but they can start learning to self-assess. But this means we have to be very careful not to throw them off course or throw them into midbrain by getting emotional. If we get emotional, they step back from us, they get out of front brain, and they go into the emotional mid part of their brain. This is not going to help them or us get the teaching part across to them that we really hope to. So we need to stay calm. That is the most important thing that we can do to help our toddlers. Now, I have a free gift that I'm gonna give you at the end of this that will help with your calmness. I think you're really gonna love it, so stay with me till then. But just know for now that our calmness is vital for helping our toddlers. They will actually mimic what we do. There's something called the boomerang effect. Whatever we send out to them, they will actually send back to us. 
So if we send calmness out, they will send more calmness back to us. They will listen more to what we have to say, keeping in mind to keep it shorter. So if you've been learning teaching self-government skills and principles for some time for your older children, and you're just now trying to apply it to your toddlers, then the answer that you've probably been looking for is yes, you can shorten the words up in the correction just a little bit. Instead of doing tons of description, do short descriptions. So when I do a correction, it sounds like this. I'm going to talk about the correction and how I do the correction for small children, but before I do, click on the subscribe button now. There are so many great videos on this channel that relate to young children as well as older children. And listen, they're going to grow. You're going to want to be subscribed to this channel for a very long time. You will not want to miss the videos that come out that could make a huge difference in the bond your child has and their feeling of security and confidence as you move forward. So now let's talk about correcting our children. Normally to do a very effective correction, what you want to do is describe the situation, give a rationale for why they need to make a change in that particular behavior that they just had, then describe what they should have done, tell them what they earned. This is where we talk about our negative consequence and then do some practices for doing things the right way with them. Give them the opportunity to go off and to do whatever it was that they earned for their negative consequence. And if they're a toddler, you're probably going to be helping them and then praise them all along the way for accomplishing whatever it was they earned and for listening to the teaching and doing maybe some of the role plays with you that will be so beneficial to them. Now, when it comes to small children, the key is pre-teaching. Pre-teaching is one of the five teaching styles that I teach in my TSG parenting course. Pre-teaching, if done well, makes it so that you have to correct your children less times overall. If you pre-teach something, then they're prepared to succeed. There's three different types of pre-teaching we use. You are going to be utilizing all three types of pre-teaching with a toddler. Those three types of pre-teaching are instructional pre-teaching, situational pre-teaching, and prepping. So when when we pre-teach our children for success, we are going to be doing it before we ever give instruction. So they need to learn the four basic skills for self-government. Those four basic skills are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. A child can learn all four of those four basic skills, even at age two. These children's books each teach the four basic skills to children. But this book here teaches disagreeing appropriately. And that's the one that I want to talk about for a moment, because many people worry that their toddler is not going to be able to disagree appropriately. And they can, but you're going to have to teach that skill to them. Now, I know I was right in the middle of correction and I am going to talk more about correction, but first let's talk for a moment about disagreeing appropriately, because before we can talk about what we're going to correct, we need to talk about what they are trying to accomplish those four basic skills of following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. Those are the goal. Those are the mark. So whenever they don't do one of the steps of those skills, that's when we're going to be correcting something. So let's talk about disagreeing appropriately. We are going to pre-teach this skill as well as all of the other three basic skills to our children. And we are going to pre-teach how we will correct the problems so that they are prepared to accept their consequences consequences and go through those teaching moments with us. The way that a person disagrees appropriately when they are little can sound very, very basic. I remember telling my little ones, no, you can't have a cookie. So that means I'm giving them a no answer, right? Well, one of the steps in accepting a no answer is that they can say, okay, or they can disagree appropriately. So then I remember my little ones saying to me, mom, can I disagree appropriately? And I said, oh yes, you can. They would say, mom, I know you don't want me to have a tutti, but I want one. That's it, very basic, very short sentences. But they were able to get the point across and because they went to their front brain instead of going to the whining mid part of the brain, I praised them and said, wow, you did such a great job at disagreeing appropriately. You said that you understood that I don't want you to have a cookie, but that you are really wanting one right now. And I think you can have a cookie. So I gave them a cookie. I showed them that it worked so that they would use that skill again and again. Now this is 
vital for the toddlers. Whatever works to help them get understood or get their way, they are going to use that skill again and again. Now at first, before my toddler thought to use the skill in that moment, I did a lot of pre-teaching. So what I did was I would say, mommy's going to give you a no answer for the cookie. Remember, you can say okay, or you can always disagree appropriately. You could say, mom, may I disagree appropriately? And then they would say, okay, may I disagree appropriately? And then I would say, yes, you can. Now, if you tell me, mom, I know that you don't want me to have a cookie, but I really want that, I want one of those cookies, then mommy will listen to you and she will probably give you a cookie. So then they would say, Mom, I know you don't want me to have a tutti, but I really want one. And then I would say, oh, okay, great job at disagreeing appropriately. And I would praise them in a way that showed them what they did really well. And then I would say, you can have a cookie. So why did they think to do the disagree appropriately on their own about the cookie at a separate time? Because I already had taught them exactly what to say in a very simple way that they could duplicate again in the future. So I am going to teach them exactly the words to say to me. I might spoon feed those words bit by bit as they are doing their disagreement with me because I have to help them develop the prefrontal cortex. That's my job as a parent to make sure that they get the opportunity to learn how to reason. And I have to do that teaching because their prefrontal cortex is too small. Okay, so let's talk about correcting. This is important. I talked a little bit about correcting. So the method of correction for a 17 year old and for a one year old are actually the same. The steps are all the same, but the delivery might be slightly different. Now you are going to want to get on the level with your child. So bend down if you can. Can. look into their eyes because one of their skills for accepting a consequence is to look in their eyes. Also for a small child that might have eyes that wander off all the time, you might want them to put their hand on top of your hands so that they can stay connected with you even if they can't maintain eye contact the entire time. So they put their hands on top of your hands, they look in your eyes, you are calm, because remember, we've worked on our own calmness, this is huge, keeping it to front brain for our child, right? So you're calm and then you say, just now, I gave you a no answer about a cookie and you did not have a calm face. You went like this, <laughs> that's not a calm face. And when you don't have a calm face, you're not happy. What you should have done is kept a calm face voice and body like this and then said, okay, and then dropped the subject. Since you chose not to keep a calm face, then you've earned an extra chore. Okay. Say, okay. And then they're going to say, okay. And so then they say, okay. And you say, great job at saying, okay, give me a high five. And you're going to praise them all the way along. And then what you do is you are going to help them do an extra chore. That's age appropriate. Maybe their extra chore is to put the blocks in the bucket or to go put this book on a shelf or to take these shoes to their room, something simple. And they say, okay. And they do that extra chore and they check back and they get praised again. And then maybe you're going to do some role plays on accepting no answers and you will help them practice accepting no answers maybe a few times so that they can get praised and have that practice time so that in the future they can do it again. You might also use the practice time in this correction to help them learn to disagree appropriately. Remember that your child needs to have more time doing things the right way than the wrong way in order to establish the prefrontal cortex, which you want them to learn so that they can solve their problems, but also so that they will do things the right way in the future. If you tolerate lots of misbehavior in your toddler, you will actually be grooming them to form a deeper synapse in their brain so that they will have a hard time to break that behavior. We definitely do not want to do that for them. Now I promised you a free gift, remember? So I have a free gift for you. There is a link below this video. I think it's the top link and it says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit. If you click on that link right now, it will take you to my teaching self-government calm parenting toolkit and you can have it for free. It is a mini course that will help you with your calmness. It will help you prepare to be calm so that they stay in front 
brain when you are doing the corrections and the teachings that you are hoping to do to help them. So click on the link to the Calm Parenting Toolkit now and I will see you there.